would, come on up to the front. We are so glad to have Thomas. I don't think he needs an introduction. Everyone knows him and uh, looking forward to what he has to say. I will go ahead and say after he is done, we are having lunch uh, here, so uh, we'll uh, try to find out what the instructions are for that um, as, w as we go. Blue. Yeah, this one's blue there. Man. Yeah. All right. This is all we got. We don't, our handheld broke, so, That's all right. I can make so you, you're, on a, you're on a leash a little bit. You can only go, <laughs> you can only go so far unless you want to put a lapel on. No, 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 no. He doesn't wear a lapel. Let the church. Amen. All right. Give me a little more. Amen. We, we first praise and honor God for just being who he is. Amen. It's not an accident that we're here today, but it's truly by God's grace and his mercy that he brought us this far. Amen. I want you to know today that God is still in the blessing business. Amen. I don't know about you. It was a blessing when I got up this morning. Amen. And I didn't even know that it had rained last night. Amen. But when I looked out though, amen, I discovered that he let a little water fall on the ground. Amen. So, we're here today to celebrate a day that the Lord has made. And he said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm glad to be here today. Pastor Saul, I mean, I've got him on my mind for some reason. Amen. But Pastor Kevin had asked me a while back. And I told him, yes, sir, I'll be there. Amen. So I'm here in person. Amen. You're not going to see nobody else, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit come, you'll see him. Amen. I must decrease while he increase, that I might be able to stand and declare <laughs> the word of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's just good to see you this morning. I hope your day has been good so far. But guess what? Keep living. <laughs> Amen. Trouble going to come. <laughs> But praise God for right now. Amen. We want to notice today for our scripture lesson. Amen. We want to go to Philippians chapter number four. Amen. And we're going to go down to verse number 19. Amen. Philippians chapter four. Amen. And verse number 19. And we're going to read that and we're going to give you something to think about on the way home. Amen. It said, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And all I want to talk to you today is my God, my God. You remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Amen. Amen. And he said, my God, why have thou <laughs> forsaken me? Amen. And, and, and I believe sometime in life, we ask that same question to God. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But yet God didn't forsake us. Amen. God sent his son that we might live. Amen. So, as we talk today about my God, amen, it's only one God, amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one, amen. It might be three, but it comes to one God, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The only way you can come to God is you got to make up in your mind that you're going to take God for your personal Savior. But my God, <laughs> y'all ain't going to pray with me today. Amen. I'm going to have a hard time in here this morning. Amen. But my God shall supply all of your needs. 
according to his riches in glory. Amen. And, and when you look at this verse, it says, but my God, and then it says, shall supply. See, God is letting us know that he is a supplier of whatever you need. Amen. On your job, they send you stuff where you can work on, right? And you have to get that done in a length of time. But guess what? Just in case you don't finish it right then, <laughs> my God will give you enough time, amen, to work it out, amen, and make everything fit in order. I stopped by here today to let you know that my God is your God. Amen. Because a lot of folk got a lot of gods. Amen. But I heard Bea, when she was out there, she told Eliza, you call on your God and I call on mine. Tell me she began to call on her God and the God that she said was a Imitation God. Y'all got any of them kind of gods in your life? Somebody talk back to me this morning. Amen. We got some gods in our life that we'll follow and know that it ain't God. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. You see, sometime when God tell us to do one thing, Lord have mercy, we'll turn around and do another. That's because we don't know really who our God is. My God is powerful. Amen. My God is a God that you can't hurry. He said, whatever you need, just call on me. Amen. And I'll answer whatever you need. You see, let's get it straight. Needs and wants, <laughs> it's two different things. Amen. When, when I looked at this scripture, he said, I will supply your needs according to my riches and glory. Amen. Because Kevin got a new Cadillac. Don't mean that I spoke to ride on the new Cadillac. Amen. He supplied his need. Amen. And we are always wondering why somebody else get blessed better than we do. But guess what? God said, I supply <laughs> all your need. And we worrying about the little bitty thing. Amen. And I tell you today that if you want salvation, you only going to get it through Jesus Christ. The one they call Jesus of Nazareth. You remember when he made it in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve was out there, and the Lord came in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam said, Lord, we're naked. He supplied some clothes for him. He made leaves. Y'all ain't going to pray with me today. Hey, Amen. You remember when they had the fish fry. Hey, Amen. And he had over a million some folk there. And they tell me two fish and five barley loaves. Good God Almighty. He supplied. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't listen to that word supply. Yeah, my every need. I stopped by here to tell you, Kevin. Amen. As you go down through your Christian journey. Amen. Some folk ain't going to be with you. But they'll give you a pat on the back. Amen. And I can remember in my mind. That when you decided to get the house on Natchez, amen, I was running out in the street doing in and everything, but yet I called myself a child of God. Amen. But I was being nosy, Louise. Amen. And I heard somebody say, amen, that man that called Kevin Riggs, he, he ain't no good. Amen. But then he sat down with brothers in the neighborhood. Amen. And they found out that he got a little grant. Lord have mercy, they turned it back on him. But my God <laughs> said, I supply all your needs according to my riches <laughs> in glory. You see, some folk don't want you to be successful in life. But all he was doing was trying to tell them, he just wanted to see their fruits. All he was trying to tell, Paul was trying to tell them, is you give me some good news. So I was with you for a while, and I had to leave you. And Paul said they sent letters letting them know that it was some fruit being raised up in Philippi. Hey Amen. All Pastor Kevin is trying to do today is see some fruit. Hey, your fruit, hey Amen, is known <laughs> by the tree it bears. And some of us are bearing some bad fruit 
in the church, not only in the church, in the neighborhood. We call ourselves a child of God. But when folk ask us, do we know the law? We'll turn around and say, I guess I do. Amen. But he said, I shall supply your need. And then, you know, all of us use this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's a good church folk, ain't it? Amen. They'll quote scriptures in a minute. Oh, but if you living by the word of God, is God supplying your every need? Or is you going out stealing, asking other folk for stuff that you don't even need? Come on, somebody, talk to me. Amen. God is a supplier, Henry. Amen. Yeah, you didn't know you were going to be in a wheelchair. But guess what? God supplied a wheelchair. Amen. For you to keep on going up and down the road. Ooh, he a supplier. Amen. I stopped by here to tell you today, the God I serve, he ain't stingy. Amen. He got a cattle over a thousand hills. All the silver and gold belong to him. He said if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Y'all better look out. I'm free to go in my preaching mode. He said if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. He said whatever you need, God's got it. I stopped by here this morning to tell you, God's got every thing you need. I went to the hospital looking for the doctor, Louis. Found out the doctor wasn't there. But when I called on Jesus, he said I'll be a doctor in the sick room. I'm free to preach y'all, but look out now. He said I'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. He said, if you need me, call me. I lay low in Zion. I'm a stone and a trial stone, precious and an elect stone. All you got to do is call me in the midnight hour. I'll answer by your name. He will supply your need. I don't know about you today. I had some knees in 1998. I was struggling between two opinions. And if God told me, say, if I be God, you serve me. Well, if you like what you're doing, stay on out there. And I looked at the Lord. I said, Lord, I need somebody to come down and save me from my sin. When I found out he sent his only begotten son on an old mm, rugged cross. Yeah, he died that I might live, but let me tell you how he came down. He came down through 42 generations, baptized by John in the Jordan River, went down there being tempted by the devil, went on a look for the, he healed the sick and raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, unstopped deaf ears, told him, said, I'm God, whatever you need, come to me and I will do what you need me to do. Kevin, hold on to God's sudden change in hand in the morning. Everything going to be all right. Just as soon as my God cracked the sky, we going home, being rest. I tell you, God is a supplier of all your needs. You don't believe me trying. How you going to try and pray? Hey Amen. You see, we want so much stuff, we don't even pray to God. We just get up and tell God, you better do it. Amen, cause you God. And guess what, Louis? He got enough sense to do that cause you said. Amen. He want to put a little trust in you. Amen, to see if you really ban fruit. Let me be honest with y'all today. If you ain't ban no fruit, your labor going to be in vain. And you think it's hard for preachers up here trying to get you on that level. Amen. So God can see some fruit come out of the church. Amen. We wrestle. We fight a mighty long time trying to see one person elevate from one grace to another. It's good when the pastor can look and see that you got a smile instead of a frown. It's good when the pastor can look at you and tell that you are really trying to do the best that you can. You see, some of us give up because we ain't never told God we was in for the long haul. Amen. The Bible tell me a man look and put his hand to the plow and look back. He ain't fit for the king. Amen. 
What Merv at? Merv asked me about two weeks ago. He said, Toma, how do you know when you've been called? I said, Merv, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Amen. You see, we have a hard time explaining it to you. But some people don't get the drift of what it is. See, God calls us. And when God calls us, we got the answer by our name. Then when we answer to God, he said, if you open up your mouth, some of y'all scared to talk in the church. Will you get up and get her a paper towel? I ain't doing it. I don't want nobody to see me moving around in the church. Hey, man, we come to do what? Make a job for Noah unto the Lord. All ye land, say the Lord until the day you die. Hey, Amen. I like the supply. He's been good to me. Hey, Amen. He brought me from one grace. <laughs> To another. Amen. He, he told me, said, go and I'll go with you. He said, if you need anything, call me in the midnight hour. How many of y'all get up at the midnight hour with trouble on the every hand? You got to get down on your knees and say, Lord, here I am. Amen. You got to talk to him like you know who he is. Know that he'll supply. Know that he'll do what he said he would do. He said, my world should go out. And it shall not return. Under me void. Now my question to you is today, is you a supplier or is you in the need for God to supply you? Well, let me put it like this. If you're in the need for something, you're at the right place. <laughs> Amen. You didn't get here by accident. Amen. Didn't nobody just tell you you ought to come and God put something in you. Amen. Because he know that you needed a word this morning. And just in case you don't understand how God operates, hey, I dare you to try him. Hey, Amen. I tell my friends all the time, let me tell you something. You can try. If you don't like what he's doing, go on back out there where you are. But I bet you one day you're going to wish <laughs> you had a supply. Because some things you want in this life, you're not going to get. So you got to be still and mark time. And David said, i wait until my change comes. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to wait on him. Because he's been good to me, ain't he? Yeah, Amen. He's been better to me, Bubba, than I've been to myself. Yeah, when I was wretched and undone, Jesus stopped by. Yeah, and he took care of me. All I want to say, he was a plow. Boy, if y'all don't get that, something wrong. Amen. Yeah, go home and ain't no sugar to make some sweet water cornbread. And see, won't he supply your need? Knock on somebody else's door. <laughs> They already got it waiting on you. They say, I just need a little sugar to sweeten up my bread. Guess what I need? A little more grace and mercy to keep me on this highway so I can be able to please God. Hey, man, let me tell you something. You ain't going to make it on your own. It's only by the blood. It's only by the blood. And guess what? It's red blood. And guess what? When they pierced him in his side, out came water and blood. If it had not, y'all done heard that before. Been for the blood of Jesus. I'd be lost in a world full of sin. It hurt me so bad when I turned on the TV this morning. They had a little Halloween party in the street. And all them kids got crushed up. And we talking about trick for a treat. Don't you mess around and get tricked and don't find the treat. Look out, somebody. Hey, Amen. We, we worshiping things that really don't mean nothing to us. It's just symbolic that we do it. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. God wasn't no Easter bunny. Huh? He sent it soon. Hey, Amen. And we turned around here taking materialistic things. Hey, Amen. And folk dying just celebrating. When you going to celebrate Jesus? Huh? When you get up in the morning, you ought to give God some praise. Why? Because he did something for you that couldn't nobody else do. You set your alarm clock, and your alarm clock went off, and you still would sleep. But guess what? Oh, my supply. <laughs> Rung a bell in your heart. Hey, Amen. And you got up. With healing in your wings. <laughs> Already got glory. 
in my soul. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Y'all act like y'all don't hear me today. But I tell you what, Pastor, I'm a supplier now. Amen. I want somebody else to go with me. You might not get there when I get there, but I want to know when I reach that city called heaven. Amen. And walk around Jerusalem, my happy home. Yeah, where all my possession lay. And then sometimes I say, Lord, do Lord, show me the way. Guide me on the road. Don't never let me go astray till I get home to God. And the reason why them old hymns is good for you is say, Father, I stretch my hand. Come here, Johnny. Amen. I stretch. Amen. My hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thou set from me, oh, whether shall I go? I asked Sister Johnny to come, and I want her to sing a song, and we're going to open up the doors of the church. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a verse or two of a hymn for my friend, my brother, my mentor, my help when I'm weak. Amen. It's good to have a friend <laughs> like Pastor Kevin that you ain't got to worry about nobody else finding out your business. See, when you go to folk and they keep it to themselves, you know you got a friend. Oh, but when you get on that telephone, amen, and the telephone beats you home. Woo, you got trouble in the house. Let us stand. You can come today. I know the Lord. He'll make a way. Make a way for me. I know God. He'll make a way. Make a way for me. said to Pastor Kevin, keep on working for the Lord. No matter what come or no matter what go, because God is your supplier. When your friends walk off and forsake you, know that God will be right by your side. Amen. We're not walking alone. If you're a child of God, you got somebody that you can lean on. You got somebody you can depend on. 
I'm going to try a verse or two of this song, and some of y'all might not understand it. I'm going to give you a little bit of why. Because I used to watch my grandmother near. They would be in church, and they'd be sitting by an old pot by the stove trying to stay warm. And they had hard times, and they couldn't talk in the field. But every now and then, whew, they could moan. And moaning means something to us. Because God know our every moan. And he know our every cry. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad you came today? Amen. You can be seated. Um, I don't know if, uh, uh, thank you so much, Thomas, and thank you for the song at the, at the end, and thank you for coming and, and singing a uh, wonderful song. Um, Mervyn, or not Mervyn, but Samantha or somebody, if somebody can go get her, she can give us instructions. I think they're bringing the food to us, I think, uh, but I'm not positive, so we'll just... Uh, We'll just soak in the uh, in the goodness of God. I don't know if you've ever played along to a song like that before. <laughs> okay. Right, Samantha, you got any? Samantha, you got instructions for us?
That's it. That's a kick. Now, this is a football. That's a kickball. That's what that's called. All right. All right. Michael, sing, sing one of your original songs. I don't care. Just, Michael's going to sing an original song. So whichever one, it doesn't have to be a Christian song. It can be one, whatever. He was saying that God is a supplier. When I first came to Nashville, my brakes went out. And uh, uh, I was stranded here in Nashville a little over 10 years ago. And that's how I got into town. And uh, when I was writing this with another friend of mine, she said, well, at least you put your best foot forward. And God is a restorer and a redeemer. So even though there's not a bunch of scriptures or Christian language in this song, it's still talking about the redemptive power of what God can do. I put my best foot forward, though I fell short. My share of times But I'm a rise above it To break the ties that bind And leave the past behind I'm gonna take a chance And if it all goes south I'm gonna cash in On it turning around there is no going back Oh, cause there's nothing there for me I'm gonna start again And put the roots in the ground I put my best foot forward I put my best foot forward yeah. I'm a lone survivor Though I'm not alone, there's stories like mine. And they bring us together from a world apart. And it's time we drop our guard. Oh, I'm going to take a chance. And if it all goes south, I'm going to cash in. On it, turn it around. There is no going back. Oh, cause there's nothing there for me. I'm gonna start again. I put the roots in the ground. I put my best foot forward. I put my best foot forward. I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna take a chance. And if it all goes south, I'm gonna cash in on turning around. There is no going back. Oh, oh. nothing left for you. Nothing left for you in the past, though. No. Nothing there for you. Yes. He'll guide your footsteps. He'll order your footsteps. He'll order your footsteps. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, mm, He will. You'll put your best foot forward. Yeah. You'll put your best foot forward. Thank you, Pastor.